من غير شيء أم هم الخالقون أم خلق السماوات والأرض بل لا يوقنون Were they created from absolutely nothing or are they themselves suggesting that they are the creators أم خلق السماوات والأرض or did they create the heavens and the earth rather they have absolutely no idea they are in utter confusion so Jubair says that at that moment when the Prophet ﷺ said that even though Jubair wouldn't officially accept Islam until later on in his life he says وَقَرَ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قَلْبِهِ he said faith entered my heart I knew at that point that there is absolutely no way that there isn't a God, that there isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, if you really just sit with yourself and you go through the process of elimination of the scientific possibilities of how we're here and how everything else around us is here, then we'd find that there is no other way to explain it except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah tells us this in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Ahqaf, he says, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ He says, say to those people that worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقُوا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ Show me what they created from this earth. أَمْ لَهُمْ شِرْكٌ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ Or do they have any partners in the, in the heavens, in the creations of the heavens? إِتُونِي بِكِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ هَذَا أَوْ أَثَارَةٍ مِنْ عِلْمِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Bring forth any form of narration, any form of book, anything that would suggest that what they're saying makes any sense, whether it's uh, textual logic or, wh or whether it's textual or whether it's just intellectual, bring forth any form of evidence that would suggest that those that you worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have anything to do with the creations of the heavens and the earth. Now realize that the Quran and the Sunnah, they're addressing a people that worship partners besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because atheism really didn't exist in the time of the Prophet sallallahu or at least he didn't encounter that because that's even far more absurd to suggest that there's absolutely no creator is far more absurd than saying that well there are multiple creators and this is taking place and that's taking place because you know at least those people that believe in something you know have some form of explanation you know for how we got here so Allah says tell me what they created from this earth and Allah started off with aruni um, mada khalqu min al-ard tell me what they created from this earth instead of as samawat instead of the heavens, because al-ard mashhuda, as the scholars say, the earth is that which is witnessed. You can see this stuff around you. You know, let's not even talk about the heavens yet. Let's talk about your house. Let's talk about the earth. Let's talk about the mountains. Let's talk about the raw materials, the seeds. And even if you, even if you would say that, well, we made our houses and we, we put together cars and we manufacture these things, how could you do that? without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without the things that are provided to you from the sky. So what if Allah withheld the rain? So Allah says, Aruni Mada Khalaqu min al-ard. Tell me what they created from this earth. Am lahum shirkun fis samawat. And if you can't explain that which is around you, then do you have a partner in regards to that which you can't see? You know, and, and the idea here is that there's no way that we could witness this, that we can see what's really above us and beyond us. So do you have anyone that's giving you revelation as to what's happening over there? Are you in communication with, with anyone that's explaining to you the creation of the heavens? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off, as the scholars say, with dalil aqli. This is logical proof that there's clearly, you know, you clearly have no explanation for the things around you, not that which you can see, and especially not that which you can't see. Then Allah moves on to dalil naqli. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on to the text. إِتُونِي بِكِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ هَذَا أَوْ أَثَارَةٍ مِنْ عِلْمٍ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you can explain it logically, then do you have a textual proof for your own beliefs and things of that sort? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you don't have a logical explanation, nor do you have an intellectual ex explanation for this. And you know, there's, there were a lot of videos that have been produced recently, I saw them with atheist logic, and what they'll do is they'll show people putting things together, or things that would come together out of nowhere, and it would say atheist logic. And it reminds me of a debate that Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah had with a group of people called al dahriya al dahriya uh, the, the literal translation of al dahriya are the timers. In essence, these were people that said, مَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهْرِ That nothing uh, you know, does away with us except for time. Uh, there is no creator, there is no creator of time, there is nothing that takes place after we pass away, there is no afterlife, so on and so forth. So this group, challenged Imam Abu Hanif rahimahullah because he was a thorn in their side. I mean, he was, doing, he was really just doing away with their movement altogether. So they said, let's have a debate. So they show up to the debate and Imam Abu Hanif rahimahullah doesn't show up and he's taking his time and people are starting to say, you know, maybe he's scared, maybe he, you know, maybe he's, uh, maybe he really knows that he can't debate with these people, he knows he's going to lose the debate. So Imam Abu Hanif rahimahullah, he shows up like an hour late and 
you know, the, the debater on the side of a Dahriya, the atheist, he says, you know, this is clearly a sign of you not knowing what you're going to say today. You clearly don't know how to argue with us on these points. So Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he said, well, let me explain to you what happened. He said, I had to come across the riverbank. And in order to come across the riverbank, I needed a boat or I needed a raft. He said, so when I got there, I realized I don't have one. So I sat there and I watched and I waited for nature to create me a raft. So I waited for you know, a, few, a few pieces of wood, a few chunks of wood to show up and then lo and behold the wind brought them together and then nails came from the bottom of the surface of the ocean and they started to nail them together. And he said, you know, by the end of it, and obviously I'm paraphrasing the story, he said by the end of it, you know, I was able to sail and get across the riverbank and debate you here, but that's why I'm late. So the guy on the other side starts to laugh. He says, you really expect us to believe that? He said, you people suggest that all of this came from nothing, that all of this is a matter of chance and not design. And you're amazed by the creation of a boat being from nature, mother nature. So this is atheist logic, right? And that comes from Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. It's one thing to say that, you know, there is no creator. It's another thing to say there is no designer after the creation. But things are so complex, it makes absolutely no sense. So Imam Abu Hanifa is, is addressing the simple fact, the simple logic that in order for you to be here, there must have been something before you. It's like belief in your ancestors. You've never seen them, but you know that they were there because it's, it's by the process of cause and effect. You wouldn't be here without them. Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he, he came up with a far more deeper answer in, in regards to the design part of it, the design piece. You know, an atheist asked him, how do you know that there's a God? He said, because of the leaf of shajarat al-tult, which is the mulberry tree. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, the leaves of these trees have the same taste, the same color, the same smell, and the same form. But when the silkworm eats it, it gives silk. And when the bee eats it, it gives honey. And when the sheep eats it, it becomes milk. And when the gazelle eats it, it becomes musk. So he said, who could have made this so diverse in regards to his production if it wasn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than a creator? And then he recited, Tabarakallahu ahsanu al-Khaliqeen, the verse in Surah Al-Mu'minun, that blessed be Allah, the best of all creators. So it's, it's beautiful when you think about it that Imam al-Shafi'i was able to derive that from a simple leaf, that there is no way that this, that this miracle could have come from anything but a designer. So it's cause and effect to know that there was a creator, you don't need physical evidence, you don't need to see it. And then after that, coming to the conclusion that this design is perfect, it's beautiful. So it only makes it clearer, and without the creator, there would be no creation, there would be no explanation for our existence.